I don't think it's quite two o'clock yet, but my internet is slow, so I thought I'd turn it on now and chat a little bit to let it catch up. And I know my buddy's out there looking to find it on live so she can post it somewhere else. So we're just going to kind of get started here in a, a minute or two. So while we're waiting, how many of you have ever lashed before, uh, done some lashing? And if you've done that, uh, tell me what you've done, what you've created. So again, we're just gonna, just gonna sit here and chat for a little bit. And um, I'm gonna show you some fun, creative things in nature. So let's see, Sarah's on there, hello. And Bonnie's on there, hello. Uh, Bonnie's going, hey, that living lo room looks familiar. So uh, we'll wait for a few more of you to, to catch up here and I can actually kind of see some of you. So uh, anyway, we're gonna talk about some crea creativity and nature. So as I, I sit here and wait for more of you to come on, I'm actually watching some birds out in my bird feeders and uh, <clears throat> there's a part of artwork out there hanging. I'm sure a lot of you have taken pine cones and, <clears throat> you know, put peanut butter and seed on them. So uh, anyway, watching that, let's see. Hello. <laughs> um, all right. Almost two o'clock. You know, I know it's a, a beautiful day, at least somewhere in the United States today. It is here, kind of windy, but um, Hopefully some of you are going to be able to get outside today. You know, after you watch this, hopefully you'll get motivated and you'll go out and you'll tear around in the woods and look for really cool things to make stuff with. So uh, waiting for a few more people to jump in. Tell me where you're from. You know, type in there, hey, and then I'll know there's, there's people on here. So uh, two o'clock. Anybody else out there? All righty. Well... I'm going to go ahead and get started because I know a lot of you will look this up later when it's not so pretty out and hopefully everybody's outside. So I am Vicki Proctor. I'm the outdoor program team leader out of the Lima and Dayton office in uh, Western Ohio. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff today. So while you're kind of checking in there, let me know where you're from because we're going to talk about creative stuff out of nature items and depending on where you are in the country that's going to probably make a difference of what you have available i probably have things here in ohio a little bit different than you have out there in western kansas or uh down there in you know texas so type in where you're from and then that way i can can see um so what we're doing today we are going to uh talk about how nature kind of influences people and gets your creative juices flowing. We're going to talk about some of the really cool things that you can can make. So while we're having people jump on real quick, I'm going to show you some just some things that you can make from natural materials. These are just kind of some of the fun things that I like to do. Maybe some of you have done dream catchers. Um, try to go beyond just the usual this is a really cool piece of stick that i found one day and i thought well that's kind of a circle i'll just use that for dream catcher driftwood if you have a lake close by uh, you can do really cool things with driftwood i just carved this tree it just kind of sits somewhere in my house and uh, speaking of trees you can do a lot with uh, tree branches I i'm kind of into these trees right now um, it's kind of gotten obsessive now that we're social distancing, but those are made from tree branches. Um, other things that you can do. Um, I decided one day to make a lamp. And so it's out of a piece of wood, some driftwood. This is birch bark. So any of you from northern, the northern part of the country, um, up there around Great Lakes, birch trees grow a lot. And so these were floating around and picked them up. And so you can get creative with functional things like that. Um, any of you like weaving? So I found this really cool stick one day. See the back looks like that. And I thought, I'm going to weave. And so I found all sorts of natural objects. There's feathers, you know, all sorts of pieces of wood. And this kind of hangs over on the wall. 
And uh, that's one thing that you can do with nature. Uh, another thing, another wall. So I took a bunch of branches and I made this. It's just a wall hanging. If you can see really good, um, I have other nature objects in here like cobwebs and uh, things. So it's a great home for spiders. Uh, if you've made tree cookie, um, what, name tags, you can take tree cookies and make something kind of like that. Just I made this frame and just put all different sizes in here. And um, a lot of these are ideas that you can find in Pinterest. Let's see. I think that's probably all I have right now uh, around me. So anyway, hopefully that gets your creative juices uh, going. So um, what we're going to do today is talk about the Outdoor Art Master Badge. And it's for girls that are 11th and 12th years, or uh, 11th and 12th grade, and ambassadors. And I, I think it's a really cool badge because it gives you a lot of options if you're inclined to be creative or really want to, uh, different modes, whether it's creating with wood or photography, um, all sorts of things. So we'll talk about um, some of the activities here in a bit, but uh, it's a really kind of cool um, badge if you're into wanting to do some masterpieces. Um, there's five steps to this badge, and we're going to work on the second uh, step, and it's make something with nature, Cre you know, create something that you find out in nature. So, um, oh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, I can actually see this, and hello, we've got Puerto Rico down there. That's pretty awesome. So, um, I'd like to know what kind of natural materials you have in Puerto Rico to, to use. That would be really cool. So um, in the activity number two, or the step two, the choices were uh, make something wearable from nature or wear in nature, uh, make a kite or solar balloon. That would be interesting. Or learn how to lash. And that's what we're going to do today is, is um, learn how to lash. Excuse me, I've got to turn my page here. So. Lashing is really neat because you can go out in your yard, in the woods, and you have plenty of material. So what you really need is just six branches of all different sizes and a little bit of twine. And you can do some really cool uh, masterpieces. So we're going to talk about uh, lashing. So what is lashing? Actually, it's really simple. It's just joining two or more sticks together. That's pretty easy. And you can do that without knowing how to lash and just tie all sorts of, of creative ways. Or you can use kind of the proper ways to put this together. And there's actually four kinds of lashing. And we're going to go over that. Um, as you can see in the background, I have a, a really cool structure uh, I made. And um, I don't know, lashing is kind of a lost art. Um, how many, again, I asked, uh, have lashed? And I think back in the day when camps were a little bit more primitive, uh, we used to lash more because we didn't have all the, you know, the newfangled fancy things at our camp. So a lot of times you had to lash maybe even a table to use. You had to lash different utensils or different ways to use them. And it's become kind of a lost art. Not a lot of people do it any longer, and it's really a lot of fun. Um, I'll get started in a second, but I thought I'd share my favorite camp memory when I was a counselor. I had the primitive unit, and when we were ready to move out into this really cool pine forest, they gave us a couple pots and pans and twine. And that was it. No tents, you know, nothing like that. So what we had to do is build everything, and my unit decided, oh man, the pine trees were all in rows. So they decided, let's build a walk-in pantry. And we built tables going in on both sides and then across the back, and we had lashed these big shelves. And we had things hanging under with shelves to hold. Um, we made like all our own utensils, and um, it was really kind of fun. And we could, it was big enough that almost the whole unit could be in there and cook and, and prepare and, and do all that stuff. So, so that's what I want to share uh, with you today. So... First of all, before you have uh, learned to lash, you have to know two knots. And so I'm hoping most of you know these. I'm going to just sort of demonstrate real quick. And if you don't catch on real quick, that's all right. You can Google these knots 
and have 2,700 YouTubes and written instructions and a hundred different ways to do these. So I'm just going to do quickly. So when you lash, you always start with a clove hitch and you always end in a square knot. So a clove hitch and then a square knot. Sometimes you have to end in a square knot or a clove hitch, but for the most part, it's one or the other. So I'm going to show you this and I'm going to sit sort of sideways. So I'm going to show you with this big rope so that you can see before we start with our twine. And I, I wore black today so it shows up a little better so you can see. So this is your working end. Your, my standing end is down there. So take your short end around whatever you're going to start to lash with and bring it around front. So again, short end around your stick, cross it over the long end, and then you have a piece looking like this. Now I leave my finger right here on this X because what I'm going to do is take this around the wood one more time and where my finger is has created a hole and that's where the end comes through and then you pull it tight and that's your clove hitch and it won't come. Great for clothes lines. Just throw that in here. So one more time around cross over the long end with your short end and then leave your finger there go around the stick one more time and in through that little space okay so there is your clove hitch you always start with a clove hitch and then what you do to finish off maybe a clove hitch or a square knot so again hopefully most of you know a square knot if not google it because again there's thousands of ways um, I'm just going to show you like this, so I think we're backwards, but what you want to do is like you're going to tie your shoe. I'm going to take my right over my left and go under, kind of like I'm tying my shoe, and then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to take my left over my right and under, and when I pull this, I'm going to end up with a knot that looks like that, and it loosens easy, okay? So that's a square knot. So again, if you can remember right over left, left over right, you got to do them opposite. So right over left and under, just like you tie your shoe, and then do the opposite, the other side over and under, just like that, okay? All right, so we can finish up with a square knot. All right, so we're ready to lash. So this is the cool part. Get rid of that. Okay, so... Um, we're going to start with, there's four kinds. I'm going to show them to you first. So the first time, first kind is called square lashing. Okay. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. We'll start with that one. And then there's diagonal lashing. Okay. That looks just a little bit different. And we'll get into that. There is shear lashing. I have that down here on the floor, which looks like this. And then the last one, which I know everybody will love, it's called continuous lashing. And that's where you can end up with a little raft, something like that. Um, one thing, this is really cool, I'm going to tell you about this so I don't forget, is at one of my camps, we used to call these wish boats. And we would create this, this is like a piece of art. And we would take a candle, light our candle, let it kind of drip, get some here on the boat, and then turn it over and stick it on there so it would kind of um, stick to that. And then at night, what we would do is we would have some kind of neat ceremony, light the candle, and we'd put this in our pond, and these would kind of drift out. And you wouldn't really see the raft, but you'd see all the candles sparkling out there. So that was a kind of a, a neat thing to do with this kind of art. Um, if you're wondering, well, how do you, do you have to go out and get them afterwards? A lot of times we'd tie a string to it and then we'd be able to pull it back. So continuous lashing. So I'll show you that. All right, so we'll get started. So again, what you need are two sticks and twine. And you can buy twine at Walmart, hardware stores, anywhere. Uh, if you're gonna do a lot of lashing, you really get into it. They have different sizes. You can even get a gigantic, you could, you know, like three miles of, of twine or yeah, twine. So have this. Okay, so we're gonna do the square lashing. So this here is, you can see it's at 90 degree angle. So if you wanted to make like, say a cross, um, you wanna st stick it out in your yard, or maybe if we do four of these, 
we could make a picture frame, but this is to make the 90 degree angles like that, okay? And see how, how nice and neat that is, and that's what makes it um, tight. So that's what we're gonna create right now. So anytime you're ready to start, you take your stick, I'm gonna do this down a little bit, and I'm gonna take the twine, and I am going to tie a clove hitch. And once you do this a lot, you'll just go, ah, oh, clove hitch comes natural. So I tied it in the middle of my stick here. And again, I'm gonna do the disclaimer because it might be hard for you to see this, or sometimes it's easier if you're you know, with someone and I can show you if you don't get it. So again, this is called square lashing, and if you don't get it, that's okay. Google it, and again, they walk through step by step and that's an easy way. So your other stick goes, I usually just put it on top of my clove hitch and I'll try to do this. So I'm gonna pull this up and it's gonna go up over the stick and then there's a pattern. So up over and when I'm underneath, I'm gonna come back up around that and then I'm gonna go over this stick and under and come back up. Now, I formed a pattern, so I'll do that kind of slow. So, and you never cross in the middle like an X. It always is on the outside. And if you want to tighten this up, you can kind of move that around. So when you're up, what you want to do is go down, and that means you're underneath, and then you want to go underneath that stick and back up and then over that one and down again. You have to go around that one and back up. Now, you do this two, three, four times. This is called the lashing part, okay? To get it tight, what you can do is kind of twist your branch and that tightens it up. Now, that's still fairly loose. So what I wanna do is we kind of stayed on the outside of our branches. Again, I never crossed over, okay? is now I wanna go in between. And so I'm just gonna kinda of pop around and now I'm gonna tighten in between my branches. Now, I should have said this in the beginning. I always leave a little bit of tail left um, when I did my clove hitch because I wanna end with a square knot. So I'm gonna go around the inside a couple times between the logs, pull really tight, okay? This is called frapping. So you do a clove hitch, you do the lashing, and then you do the frapping. And if you go around three or four times in the lashing, go around three or four times in the frapping, and then you just wanna end up where the tail is from your clove hitch, and now I'm just gonna tie a square knot, right over left, left over right, and voila, we're done. So like I say, if that's, if that's kind of hard for you to see, I apologize, um, but see how it's 90 degree angles? Okay, so that is square lashing. I do not have any on this because it's all kind of angled, and, but anytime, again, you wanna do like kind of a cross or have this square like that, then that's what this is for. So in mentioning that this is on an angle or a diagonal, that's our next kind of lashing. So let me, let me clean up here. All right, the next one looks like this, or if you can look back here, this goes this way, but it's still kind of at an angle. So um, I want my sticks to be kind of like an X, like this. So before I show you, what I did on here is I did a, a clove hitch, and then I wanna give you a couple uh, directions. So there's three ways we lash on here. One way is around between these sticks. So if you can see like between here and here, that's one direction, okay? We're gonna wrap that way. Then we're gonna go this way. We're gonna wrap around these here. It's hard to show you this. So this is one way between like this. This is the other way. And then we're gonna frap, which is in between, okay? So this way, this way, and then tighten it in between. So let me get a couple more sticks here and find my other twine here. Okay, so for this one, again, we're gonna do clove hitch in the middle. All right, got my clove hitch. 
Now, the secret to lashing, I think, is doing them very neat. And um, the way I judge if people have done them well is the string is all lined up and it's all real nice and neat. So I'm going to show you like this. I'm going to put that together like that. So now, again, I said go this way. So we're going to take the twine. We're going to go around this way. See how we're going a couple times this way between, okay? Now, I want to switch, and then I'm going to go in between or around that way, okay? And then I don't quite have enough, but what I would do then is frap and go in between and pull it really tight, okay? So again, I started, I went this way, this way, and then in between. And that's called diagonal lashing. And you could do this on really long sticks and um, make a tripod. Well, you could put two sticks together. You could put one across. Um, anyway, so that's diagonal lashing. And again, all my corners here are diagonally lashed. All right, so I'm going to take this apart. So I need that twine. The next one is really fun. I don't know if any of you are Survivor fans and you watch Survivor and they have that one challenge where they give them about four or five real skippy little sticks. They have to tie them together, make the stick real long and get the keys to bring back through. Um, that's always been my favorite one because if they know how to shear lash like this, then um, they would have been able to do that and had their stick stay a whole lot better than falling apart. So shear lashing is taking two sticks and lashing them together to make them longer. So if you all, I know what you can do. So if anybody says we need a flagpole and you have about four or five sticks that are a couple feet long and none of them are long enough to do a flagpole, then just get them. And if you do this kind, um, you can put them together. So this is very easy. Let's get some more sticks down here. Is again, what are you going to do? What's your first knot you're going to do? Okay, clove hitch. Yes. So, okay. So we got our clove hitch on there. Now, this is very difficult. Actually, not really. So this is where we're going to start with a clove hitch and end with a clove hitch because we're going to maneuver down and we're not going to be able to come back up and catch this tail, okay? So what we're going to do is take the string and we're just going to wrap it around and we're going to lay it. So one thing you can do is maybe wrap your, get, get rid of your tail so it's not always in your way. So we're going to wrap around both sticks, keep this nice and neat. See how I'm laying it just right next to each other? And I'm going to do that for as far down as I think that I uh, need to go. I'm just out of twine. And then once you go a ways, then what you can do is cut through there. And then you frap. So the first part is lashing. Second part is frapping. I'm going in between. Okay. And then what I've now done is, and then I have to tie a clove hitch to end this, and that's kind of difficult, but I'll show you that in a minute. And so when I'm all done, it, let me get that tucked in there. So it's going to look like this. And if you need, again, to make two posts or poles, all now you have to do is twist it, and now you can set that, and then you can maybe put something in here. So that's called shear lashing. And if for some reason you might have a really long stick, and if you just put one in here, well, I'll show you with this. This is, gets kind of wonky, so it's not real, real tight. But the way that you can eliminate from that bending is to make your stick overlap a little bit longer. Shear lash right here, shear lash right here, and then those two would work together to be really tight, okay? So look up shear lashing. All right, moving along, we have one more. And that's where it's continuous lashing. And here's where you can make tables. So I wanted to kind of explain 
like this could be a piece of art and you could put maybe other natural materials because again we're talking about being able to lash something like this but make some art out of it um, one way you could make a table and we'll start with that is go out and find two trees close together and then find um, so we'll say there's a tree here and a tree here you can take your square lashing and lash these to the tree so that that forms the basis for your table so I have one of these right here here's a, a bottom piece and there's a piece just happens to be a triangle but this could be on two trees like this and then what you'd want to do is take your logs this is where it gets difficult with just one person and start putting your logs across so I'm going to show you how to do this so this is a great social distancing project uh, not really you it, it's so much easier with a buddy but since I don't have a buddy I'm going to show you one one end at a time normally this is great with buddies because if you're not doing a tree and you're just going to build a, a, a like a raft type thing you could have one of your buddies hold this end one of your buddies hold this end and then that way you don't have to hold these they're stationary okay and I'm gonna pull this down here like this so now you've got a friend over here and a friend here holding this and then what you start doing is you start adding these now we could tie each one of these on separately with square lashing but that would take a long time because if we want to do something really cool we want a whole bunch of these across here and that would take forever and you might not get them really tight um, we're going to add all our sticks on here so what you would do is you'd have a friend working on this side to to continuous lash and a friend working on this side so this is great two friends here two friends this could take four people but anyway I'm going to show you how to do just kind of one side at a time so I'm going to get some twine you need longer a longer piece so maybe a couple um, three four yards with this depends on how thick your branches are okay have some scissors okay what you want to do for this you start with a clove hitch but we need two pieces of string so find the middle of your twine right there and what I'm going to do is tie the middle so you're gonna go well that's kinda kinda weird no not really just tie your clove hitch make your X just one of the long ends comes around okay and now what I've done is I've tied my clove hitch but now I have strands coming down both sides like that okay all right so back on the lap hopefully you'll be able to to see this and we'll get this down just a little bit all right and I'll leave this one right here just so that you can see that that would be over here now I'm gonna have a string the exact same string on this side and then I have my string over here we take our first log put it on here and this is the fun part what you do is you pull your strings let's see if I can angle myself here so you can see better so I pull my strings up right here is where I put my branch and what I do is I take the strings over that branch and I take one down one side and one down the other side take them underneath and cross and then I pull them right back up so okay so I will show you that way I've lost my other string so I just went over under the bottom one crossed over and I come back up so let me let me get set up here this is, this is when I really needed that buddy that's that's about a half hour south of here helping me so anyway so we're now we're ready for the second branch okay that goes right up again I'm going to do exact same thing this goes over one down one side one down the other side I cross them bring them straight up okay when you're continuous lashing you want to keep this nice and tight keep it pulled tight keep these in nice and tight together and then we're going to take another stick put that on there it's nice if you have the same lengths I, I just don't 
So I'm going to take these two up over that one. One string goes down one side, one down the other side. We get underneath the cross piece there, cross over my strings, and pull it back up. That's continuous lashing, okay? So you can see how it's very easy. And while I'm doing this side, my buddy would be doing this side. So we would do it at the same time, then we get our next branch on, do it together, get our next branch on. And if I can unplug this and see if I can show. Okay. So I'm going to show you this table back here. Okay, I have, this is a great work table, but that's what continuous lashing looks like. Okay, so you've got one side and you've got the other side, and then it forms a table. So now you can get really creative with what you could do with continuous lashing. So there you go. That's lashing kind of in a nutshell. There's four kinds. So again, if those are confusing, Google them. So there's square. What's the next one? Diagonal. The next one is sheer. It's also called round lashing because you're going around. And the last one is continuous. So square, diagonal, sheer, and continuous. So again, just Google those. They have just really good instructions. And now, basically what you need to do is, your task is go out and be creative. Go find some sticks. And, you know, this is where you can practice your knife skills, whittle them down, you know, make them look really cool. So what can you create uh, using lashing? So that's uh, requirement number two for this badge. So again, my creation is this tripod. Oh, I forgot to say, in your sheer lashing, you can actually do three sticks at a time and those will open up in a tripod. And that's what I have up here, is I did the sheer lashing around three sticks, frapped in between both sets, and then that just opens up. So if you're like, oh, I need to hang a pot over a fire and cook some soup or something, then make a tripod and voila, you, you can do it. So you can lash that way. But anyway, so get creative. So I wanna tell you what the other requirements are for the badge. Um, these are really cool. So maybe this will entice you to wanna earn this whole, whole thing. So the first requirement is uh, explore outdoor art. Um, so what, there's three options. Um, maybe create something with in store, inside stuff and go outside and then find something there and then mingle them to have an indoor outdoor like looking project. You could create and do some kind of an art show. I guess I could do that with all my stuff. And then um, this is one of my favorite ones. Find a female artist who's been influenced by uh, the outdoors and nature. And I wanted to show you um, this. So I, um, I do, I've, I've camped in Utah. Anybody out there from Utah? I know sometimes we've gotten a few people, but um, I love the canyons and the colors and the smells and all the aromas and it's the, the heat coming off of rocks. And that just really inspires me. And one of the female artists that I found is her name Serena Supple, S-U-P-P-L-E-E. -E. And her, she's been inspired by nature and she does a lot of these. These are cards that I picked up. And I, th I think what this badge is all about is being able to create and use nature to inspire other people. And so when I see these, her art inspires me, like it immediately takes me back and I'm there in the orange canyons and I can sense and feel. And so I think when you're like doing these art projects, you know, what motivates you? It, it doesn't really matter if other people get it or like it. It's, it's all about you. So, so that's one of the requirements. Um, another one is um, find music in art. So if you're more of a music type person, some of your options would be um, find some of the, the songs you like, make a soundtrack, and then go hiking to it. And you can share that with people. Uh, I have a friend out there, hello that uh, does that for hiking and walking. Uh, she's got some really cool songs that she listens to all the time. Or find uh, songs in nature, like bird songs and noises and make a soundtrack using those. Or how many of you have ever 
uh, made a musical instrument with using nature. You know, I, even sticks pounding together, um, but you can get gourds and there's packages you can make musical instruments like little guitars and things with. So um, that's one. The fourth requirement is nature ph photography. So if you're more inclined to, you know, really enjoy taking your, your phone or your camera out with you, um, try doing some art with a photography. So digital diary, like I keep a journal, but maybe instead of words, you could use pictures um, or um, maybe try to implement a change to something. Maybe there's something out in nature that kind of bothers you and you would like to bring, you know, have people notice it and, and have a, a change. You could go out, take pictures, have a series. And then the other one is just a new perspective. How many of you ever have laid on your backs and take a picture up, over, up through a plant? Um, I do that with May apples all the time. It's kind of fun. Or, or selfies, you know, with plants. And then the last activity would be design with nature. So uh, a lot of landscape people design all the time using nature. So you could get creative design a little area in your back, backyard or for your community. Um, a treasure hunt, you could design a treasure hunt like geocaching or something where once you find them on a map, maybe that creates a design. Um, the other one is natural play spaces. So I don't know if you've been to any uh, nature preserves where they have a bunch of maybe huge logs and sticks and rocks and branches and kids can just get out and crawl around and create and be in nature using nature so so those are some of your options for the other part of that badge and um, you know I think Again, what this is, is just to inspire you guys to get outdoors, enjoy. Um, gosh, what I do is I just roam around all sorts of places and I find stuff all the time. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I found this, I can create with that. Now, most of it sits in my barn until I do get inspired or I go, you know, I need this thing. And then a lot of times I will already have that. So anyway, so that's, um, that's art or outdoor art master and hopefully you enjoyed that uh my living room is a disaster now but if you enjoyed this and you aren't in girl scouts uh you can go to gs.org join you can learn all about us we do cool stuff like this all the time and if this is your first time um we do this every day 10 10 in the morning and two in the afternoon we do different badges and activities and and things and you can you know join in that's eastern time uh, you can find all of our videos, our Facebook Lives, etc., on our GSWO uh, website or our Facebook page. And then um, just to entice you to come back, and uh, we're not going to do art, but on Monday at 10 a.m. in the morning, if you've never used a bow saw or uh, chopped with a hatchet, you're going to learn how to do those. So join us then. And I guess it's time to go. So thanks everybody for joining in. And I hope to see some lashing projects, lashing art out there, get creative. And um, now go, go forth and multiply and, and create and have a good Saturday. Thanks.